Have you ever listened to a commercial mix before and tried to compare it to one that you were working on and noticed that it not only sounded louder, but felt louder, even if you gain match the two? Well, we're going to be going over that in today's episode because we want to know how to make our mixes sound impactful and powerful and also understanding the perceived loudness of the tracks that we're dealing with so before getting too far ahead of myself i'm just going to jump right into the topic how do we make our music sound loud so what's going on guys miami here with jst and i've had this problem in the past a lot and i've seen it a lot because people will show me and ask me questions about this and i thought it was about time to do an episode specifically targeted at this first topic that i want to get into is limiting your buses we don't want to just maximize our loudness though. We want to make sure that we're maintaining clarity and that the dynamics are controlled. In essence, it's about applying limiters on your groove channels or your buses to control the dynamic range and ensure that no individual tracks are overpowering the mix. All right, so the first thing that we wanna do is we want to identify all of the buses that we have and make sure that our instruments are being sent to the proper group. All your drums are being sent to a drum bus, guitars sent to the guitar bus, bass is sent to a bass bus you know if you're doing something where you have multiple bass takes for whatever reason same with vocals and also keys and any other extraneous parts the next thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you add a limiter to each one of these things this is really common in rock music to add limiters to things like guitar buses some genres might not like doing this because they don't like how controlled the dynamics become but if we think about distortion in the way that it works it's already compressing a signal and we already want it to kind of be pinned so all the limiter is going to do for us there is tighten it up a little bit more so like i said you're going to add a limiter to each one of these tracks to make sure that it is cohesive and that all the dynamics are controlled and the peaks are controlled because those are things that are going to stop you from being able to push your mix later on to be louder We want to make sure that when we do this that the attack and release times are set appropriately and also that we're not pushing more than you know two or three db especially with guitars i only like to do one and if you have a problem finding a compressor setting a lot of times it's easier to use compressors that have fixed settings so that you don't have to worry about that you just kind of have to deal with the threshold here's an example of what i'm talking about for your buses So what does this result in? It results in us having a mix that is extremely controlled. It doesn't have the kick drum punching through the mix too much or the snare pushing too much. Everything is sitting in its appropriate pocket. But you wanna make sure that when you're doing this, you don't create a lifeless mix because you can do that by over compressing and that's never the goal here. We just want to tame peaks. We're not trying to destroy the sound that we've designed. And if you like what you were just listening to, to compress this, we were using one of our bus glue series. This is great because you don't have to deal with attack and release times. And we have a few of these in the line, Billy Decker bus glue, Joel Wanasek bus glue, and of course, JST bus glue. Any of these will get you where you want to be, but they all have specific flavors. And this is what we're using in this video. If you want to grab a copy of that, go down in the description below, click the link. Now that we got that out the way, we're going to transition into our next topic we're going to cut out unnecessary sub frequencies but you guys already know i care about my subs so much the ones i take away from there i want to add to the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button notification bell and like button if you're enjoying the content so far transition game is still crazy now when you go over your tracks and you use something like a spectrum analyzer most of these are built into eqs nowadays you'll see unwanted sub frequencies in a lot of your tracks in drums you don't really need anything that's under 30 hertz really you don't need anything that's under 100 hertz with guitars 80 to 100 and with vocals you definitely don't need anything under 80 to 100 hertz by removing all this stuff you're going to create a lot more headroom for your track 
Other than that, you're just trying to take that in a mix and compress it all together. And those frequencies that you can't even hear and that are unnecessary are just eating up space. And that's a big reason why you can't get your mix louder. To fix this, use EQ plugins to identify and cut those sub frequencies on tracks where they don't belong, like vocals and guitar. But make sure that you leave your deep bass and your kicks alone. You don't want to mess with those too much because those are going to be the driving force and backbone of your mix. And if you don't understand what I'm talking about, Here's a difference in a mix that has those lows cut out versus one that does not. I don't know if you could tell the difference on those speakers there, but it's pretty important, especially as you go further along in the mixing stage. By doing this, just know that you're creating a cleaner and more defined low end, which not only makes your mix sound better, but it's going to make it feel more professional. And speaking of professional tips, we are going to go on to the next thing you can do. We are going to talk about monoing out your low end. And a lot of tracks, low end is spread across the stereo field. And by taking it out of that stereo field on the sides, not only will you make your mix louder, but the perceived loudness of the mix will also start to be pushed. You don't need to have low end on your guitars anywhere but the center. And same thing for the bass, like you wouldn't want any of that spreading unless you're doing some kind of stereo bass effect. And even if you were doing that, those really low frequencies, you're not gonna really want to have those pushed out to the sides same thing goes with everything like you don't want that with vocals i could see maybe being okay with that with drums but for the most part you want to get those out of the way to fix this you can use a stereo imager or something like jst maximizer to collapse the low frequencies below up to 100 hertz into mono and this ensures that your low end is going to be centered and solid now let's listen to that low end before and after it was monoed out and see if you guys can hear the difference and also feel the difference. I definitely felt the difference and not only does this change the perceived loudness of the track but you're going to get a better listen on playback systems like your car stereos or in club scenarios anything like that it's just going to sound better having that low end in the center but yeah let's go on to another topic of what makes a mix feel louder as well right parallel compression so what parallel compression does is it blends the original track uncompressed with a duplicate of the track that is heavily compressed. And by pushing this up, you are getting a much punchier sound to what is happening in the original. But yes, this makes the individual tracks feel more powerful and feel more impactful, punchier. And what this does, whether you realize it or not, even if you were to have them at the same level, one is going to sound louder than the other one. It's just the way that we're going to perceive that from playback. When you have something that is exciting and punching and pushing, it's just gonna feel louder and punchier, even if it's something that was gain matched down to the point decibel. So to apply it, just duplicate the track you wanna process, apply a heavy compressor to the duplicates and adjust the settings for an aggressive compression then mix it back in with the original to taste. And if you wanna know, Andrew Sheffs actually does this to his entire mix, which I think is really interesting. He will take the whole mix, compress the whole thing, and then start tucking it under the one that he has. He calls it the rear buzz trick. And I actually talk about this in another video. We're gonna show that right here. And that's one that you can definitely check out and hear the difference about how much more perceived loudness you actually get, even if it's not making the track louder technically on a number system. And now, my friends, I want to go on to the final topic of this saturation and harmonic excitement. What do these things do? They add all the buzzwords that we love in audio. Uh, saturation and exciters, they add 
warmth and excitement and character, right? And one thing that you want to notice most of the time when you're adding these things, you're adding it to the mid frequencies and above, right? You don't notice too much harmonic excitement that's happening in the low end. But when it happens to the high end, what happens when you hear sounds that are brighter? It automatically starts feeling like it's louder. And you know, there's a lot of saturation plugins that will add harmonic overtones to your mix and it will kind of give a distortion that's associated with analog gear and warmth. You know, I have lots of analog gear that does exactly what this process is talking about but at the end of the day what it really does is make it sound fuller and the more full that your track sounds the louder it sounds and the more louder it feels so actually let's show an example here of something that's being pleasantly saturated versus something that's not because when you're dealing with something like i said that adds harmonic overtones it's going to typically be in the mid range and above and that's going to make it sound brighter brighter is going to sound louder not only does saturation add loudness, but it can also make your mix cut through on smaller speakers and earbuds, and that improves its overall impact and loudness. So there you guys have it. Five mixing techniques that will make your mix not only sound louder, but feel louder. We did limiting your buses, cutting out sub frequencies, monoing your low end harmonic exciters and saturators, and parallel compression for punch. By using these five techniques, I ensure that you'll be able to make a mix sound and feel louder. And when you compare it to commercial tracks afterwards, you'll start to notice the differences of what you were lacking. A lot of people don't talk about this aspect of it. It's more so like, how do we get it louder? Cause I'm looking at the Luffs and I'm looking at the RMS. Well, there's things that attribute to that inside the mix. And I'm glad that we got to go over that today. Are there any other things that you would do to make your mix louder besides saying that you're gonna send it to Lander or to Master or something like that? What tricks of these do you already use for yourself? Leave it in the comments below and I'll chat with you fine people like I always do.